All right, we're going to start talking about creating this uh, choose your own adventure program here. So we're going to make a new class. We're going to call it choose your own adventure. And we want to be able to run this guy, so we're going to make it have a main method. Mine unfortunately lost the source folder, so I'm going to go using user input slash SRC. Okay, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. That should already be in there for you. Uh, choose your own adventure is the name of the class. Main method. We're going to finish that. And we get something like this. So the first thing that we want to do is inside of the main method, we want to tell it to make a new choose your own adventure object. So we're going to make new choose your own adventure object. So that's inside of the main method, and that's all that we're going to do inside the main method. Okay, so that's done right there. Uh, so then inside of the class, we're going to make a couple scanners. One for reading strings, so string reader. Alright. And then you could copy and paste that. And also create or change the name of it to number reader. And then we have two scanners that we can use in case we want to read strings or in case we want to read numbers eventually. Okay? Uh, scanner is underlined because why? Because it needs to be imported. Okay, good. So we just mouse over that, tell it to import scanner for us. And now we're going to write our constructor. So down here in the main method, when we click run in Eclipse, it's going to go to the main method and it's going to say, okay, we're making a new object. So we're going to instantiate an object. And the type that we're going to instantiate is a choose your own adventure. So that is going to go to this constructor method. And what we're going to do in there is basically give the introduction to our story. Okay? I'm going to minimize this uh, project explorer so that you guys can just focus on the programming here. So inside of the constructor there, we're going to go ahead and say something like the beginning of our story, whatever that is. So um, for me, it's going to be you're walking down a dark hallway. Okay. So just going to keep on going with system dot dot print lines here. Um, except I keep hitting return. You see a room with a light on. And then we'll say something like, do you want to go in the room or continue in the hallway? All right. And so now the user has their first choice, but we want to do like kind of an e even better job of prompting for that. So I'm going to do another system.out.print. And then I'm going to put in here, enter hallway, okay? But I'm going to put that, there is a way to get quotes in there, but I'm just going to put these apostrophes in there. If you do accidentally put quotes, it'll screw things up, because it'll think that hallway then is a variable, okay? So use single quotes there. So enter hallway, or... <laughs> Bless you, room. Bless you. 
And then the user is going to make a choice. So I'm going to create a string variable called choice. Okay, that's equal to, I'm reading a string, so I'm going to use my string reader and get the next input or next line. Okay, so this is the way that we're going to kind of do each of our story parts, and each story part is going to be in its own method. So this is going to be, you're walking down a dark hallway, you see a room with a light on, do you want to go in the room or continue in the hallway? Enter hallway or room, that's their choice. So we're going to call it a variable choice and input that option, input whatever they type in. And then we're going to make a decision in our program, which we introduced last week, how to make a decision. All right. So the way we do that is with an if. All right. And what we're, what we're trying to look at here is the choice that they made. So we're going to use choice and see if it equals hallway. And then we're going to see if it equals room. Okay, so the way that we do that with a string is we use it, what's called the dot equals method. Okay, so, so string defines this method called equals, and we're going to say if choice dot equals, and then in, in quotes, so it's another string that it's going to be equal to, hallway. All right. And we'll do the same thing to see if choice equals room. So if choice dot equals, bless you. So what we've done is we've basically set it up so that if they chose hallway, we can tell it to do something if that's true, okay? And if they chose room, we can set, we've set it up so that we'll do something if they put room in. Okay. The problem right now is if they put something else in, we don't really have it set up. So if I put in um, end of the story, you know, it's just going to stop and not go anywhere. Okay. So they we could do some stuff to fix that, but we're not we're just not there yet. So we're not going to worry about that right now. All right. So then we want somewhere for this thing to go. And we kind of looked at the, the web of the story on the board here. Uh, but <clears throat> basically the idea is that I need methods. So I'm going to make another method down here. Okay. That is going to represent my hallway story. Okay. So we need methods where we're going to tell the rest of our story or the next part of our story. Okay, so I'll have a hallway story, and I'll have a, another method called room story. Okay. Am I going too fast? So, um, so there's there's a decision being made here to see if choice equals hallway. This bracket defines all of the instructions that are going to happen if that's true. Okay. This bracket defines all of the instructions that are going to happen if choice equals room. This bracket is the end of our constructor. All right. And so after the constructor, then we're making a new method called hallway story. And these two brackets are surrounding all of the instructions that are going to go in the hallway story. All right, so we want to be able to uh, flesh this out a little bit, but I'm just going to kind of make it uh, short and sweet so that we're not sitting here like typing the whole story together. Uh, um, and you're going to have your own story for yours anyway. So. Um, you see a ghost if you stay in the hallway. Okay. And I would put more story in here, but we're just going to 
go with the next thing, which is system dot out dot print enter run or hello. Okay, so basically it's like you have the options of either running away from the ghost or saying hello to the ghost. All right, and what you should be noticing now is that we're going to be following the same pattern that we're finding up here. Okay, so we're going to say, we're going to give them a choice. You either enter this or that, and after they enter it, then we're going to um, go one way or the other. Okay, so then this will be another string. Okay. Um, and I'm going to just call this hallway choice because I'm in the hallway right now. And that's going to be string reader, just like we did a second ago, dot next line. Okay. And so if hallway choice dot equals run then we're going to do something and if hallway choice dot equals hello then we're going to do something else and let's just worry about this right now Okay, so do you understand that that's the same sort of structure as what we had in the constructor? It's okay? Okay, so what we want to do though is we want to make sure that we're making a connection between each of these parts of the story. So the way we do that is up here, let's go back to the constructor, okay? Choose your own adventure, it's going to go through all this stuff. If choice A equals hallway, we want to jump and do hallway story if they chose hallway. Is that making sense? So up here, we would need to put in a call to hallway story. And what that does is it sends us to here to do this stuff. Okay, so that is what I've added inside of the constructor. No. Yeah, so we would do it with room as well, right? So we have this method down here that I already created called room story. Okay, now there's nothing in there right now, but I think it makes sense that if they chose room, that we'd want to go to the room story. Okay, and then there would be stuff in there to tell the story about what happens when you go in the room. Okay, eventually we're going to get into a method where there are no options because we reach the end of the story, right? Where it's just like, you know... The ghost does something terrible, end of story, you know? Or the ghost is a friendly ghost and whatever, you know? It's like you guys be as creative as you want with this thing, but what I want to make sure you understand is we're using a scanner to get input, and then we're making a decision about that input, and depending on what they chose, so choice could either be hallway or room, and if they chose hallway, then we're going to go to the hallway story, if they chose room, then we're going to go to the room story. So I'm not going to do much in here. I'm just going to say, okay, you're in an empty room. Okay, pretty exciting story. And then we're going to go ahead and run this thing. And we'll come back and examine the code a little bit. But right now, this is where we are. You guys understand that? You're walking down a dark hallway, you see a room. Do you want to go in the room or continue in the hallway? Enter hallway or room. Okay, I want to go in the hallway. Okay, you see a ghost. Enter run or hello. 
okay? So that's really the end of the story for me right now because I didn't program anything past that. When I entered hello, it figures out that I entered hello up here, but it doesn't do anything after that because I didn't put any instructions in right here, okay? If I run it again, all right, now let's say I want to go in the room. Now it says you're in an empty room, okay? So I entered room, go to room story. Room story says you're in an empty room. The last thing that we want to do here is we want to make sure that after we are done using the scanner objects that we close them. So back up inside of the constructor, choose your own adventure right here. After we check if it's room story or hall story, hallway story, we're going to go ahead and type in string reader dot close and number reader dot close. All right, so it may seem kind of confusing, like if we close the string reader and the number reader right here, that they won't be available for the other methods. Um, I'll, I will explain why that's not the case in another video.